my name is Sharon and um, I've recently been diagnosed with fibromyalgia although I've had the aches and pains for many years um, I'm finding myself in starting to get uh, into financial issues around 2009-2010 um, I had to stop being a legal secretary um, I no longer had good cognitive abilities and um, it was just I just could no longer be who I was. Um, I used to do merchandising on the side so now I'm a cashier at Walmart and um, I like working there but the income is not very good. Um, gradually through 2011, 2012 um, I was put a little bit more restricted on how many hours I could work and um, once we got the fibromyalgia diagnosis we realized why I couldn't work eight hours a day and my doctor um, wrote a note to uh, my employer saying okay let's just do three days a week five hours maximum and so far I'm able to sustain that uh, almost, I usually work Friday, Saturday, Sunday, uh, just five, five and a half hours, because I get a dinner break. Um, but Monday, after I've done my three days, uh, I'm almost bedridden the entire day. Um, it's very exhausting, and it confirms to me why I'm only able to work the hours and the days that I can. Um, financially, um, right now I'm only making about $700 a month. Fortunately, I just got approved for persons with disability uh, funding from the provincial government of BC. And <clears throat> my issue right now is what happens when I start stop working at Walmart. Well, I won't have 1500 or 1600 I'll be down to $900 a month. And in the city of Langley, where I've been living, um, 950 is practically the minimum for any uh, apartment rentals. Um, I've been share, you know, being a roommate since 2009 because of my financial situation. And um, I recently was at a, I rented a bedroom in a home for $400 a month. But there were like bad, it was a bad situation for me. And the stress was getting really bad. Um, one of the people at the house um, uh, was a, an addict, is an addict. And um, I just didn't get along with that person. and. It just, my fibromyalgia and stress was just too extreme. Um, I lost a very close family friend on a, on a Saturday and couldn't work that day or Sunday. But on the, the day after she died, I, um, I was grieving and, um, um, Basically, um, the drug addict was smoking marijuana and I screamed and yelled at him and, and I went and left and went into a hotel for two days. Mm -hmm. I needed to get my thoughts together and, um, you know, life has to go on. I needed to grieve I needed to, and I couldn't do it at my rental. Um, fortunately, I was able to stay with my daughter at the, my daughter's place for two days uh, watching my granddaughter and that's where I spent some time looking for another accommodation uh, roommates again because that's all I could do uh, financially and I found a bedroom in a, a basement suite again and um, it, it's in a very nice couple um, they're in their 20s and they have a dog which I love being around dogs but it's $600 a month 
and that's that's just for living um, in the space. So I do have, you know, finances. I um, I'm going to have to stop using my car because um, it's too old and uninsurable. So I'm going to have to start relying on the bus and um, things like that. I'm like uh, <laughs> it's amazing how finances just. I don't know. And if I ever quit my Walmart job, uh, I'm only going to have like the $900 a month. And right now, I just don't know where, you know, where I could stay, how things would go. And um, even the house that I'm at right now, what happens if this couple in a year or two want to, you know, go into a bigger suite and get married and stuff like that? I have no guarantee of where I'm going to be living so you know I'm 60 now by the time I'm 65 I have nowhere that I'd be um, a couple of years ago I uh, asked my mom who lives in Penticton if I could live with her and she said no um, my mom has issues of her own even though she owns her home um, my, I only have two brothers and one brother, he is newly married and his wife mm, um, didn't even appreciate having his daughter there when she was in high school. So they asked her to move out as, you know, fairly quickly after high school, so I'm not asking him. And my other brother, he co-owns a home with a man and... That man's sister lived in the basement, and my brother couldn't stand living with her and a bunch of cats. So the co-owner was asked to remove, you know, get his sister out. So my brother can't put me up, having already said the other guy's sister had to go. So it's like, I can't live with my mom. I can't live with my two brothers. Um, I only have one daughter. And she's currently pregnant, <laughs> um, expecting the second child. So that fills up their household. And, um, you know, that's my family. That's it. That's all I have. Um, I did ask one friend, um, but she's got issues of her own. So basically this, this group home... Um, It'll be a godsend for me. It'll be something that I can put roots down. Um, I know that I won't get kicked out. And um, I'll have a home until I need to go into a nursing home. Mm -hmm. And hopefully it'll be many years to come because my mom's 82. So I'm hoping to live long. And yeah, it'll give me a lot of peace of, of mind. Um, being able to stay... Somewhere where I'm wanted, and uh, also sounds like needed. You know, and so that's my story. <laughs>